like working on your own business brings so much joy. It's like every little win that you get uh, in your own business is like a million times better than any win that you'd get in your, if you were employed, for me anyway. In this week's episode, I interview Brett and Caroline from Sten Gun Drawings. Sten Gun Drawings is a botanical design brand and they sell greeting cards and also prints. And they are incredibly colorful, very modern, very graphic designs. And I've had the pleasure of receiving some of them in the past. This interview is the first one I've done with um, guests who aren't florists or garden designers and I'm thrilled with how it went because they both share so much valuable information for small business owners. They've been going there for three years and they talk about their small business journey and how they're now selling overseas to many distributors and um, when you listen to the podcast you'll hear where their latest pickup was from today for some of their designs. So I hope you enjoy this week's interview. Make sure you stay to the end because there are more than three tips which I'm sure you'll find really useful. Hello Brett and Caroline and a very warm welcome to the My Small Business and Me podcast. Hello. Hi Rona, thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you. I should also have said hello Rocky as well, but he's asleep, isn't he? Yes, he's snoring. This is a a four-week-old boy, Rocky, uh, and I've just got off to sleep, so I think this is looking good. (laughs) (laughs) Let's hope so. You hear any gurgles, it's not me. (laughs) (laughs) Hope not. (laughs) So let's start off with your small business journey, if you'd like to share that, please. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, it started with you, really, didn't it, Kaz? You know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, so well, Stain Gun Drawings is obviously a botanical design brand. Uh, we do greeting cards and uh, prints, um, but it didn't it, it didn't start off that way. Um, it was very, very organic. I um, I actually studied fine art at university uh quite a few years ago um but took a bit of a detour into fashion um and um it was just a few years ago i wanted to kind of start painting again and this is purely my um, my fault i do have a full-time job as well which is still in fashion um and we went down to working four days a week so i was like oh i need a hobby on that day. i didn't have kids then so i need, needed a nice hobby and i actually started cooking and I started painting and um, cooking didn't work out. I'm terrible at cooking. <laughs> um, so I just started painting a- again. Um, I have to say when I was at uni, I kind of lost a bit of confidence doing it because everyone was doing very um, conceptual art and you know they were all getting the you know the great, great grades. Um, <clears throat> so I think kind of, you know, I lost my way a little bit. So I just came back to it and just started a little Instagram, just my silly, drawings at that point yeah <laughs> um and uh, and then I started to get really positive feedback and um I started to get some commissions I think that was probably the main thing that kind of boosted my confidence was getting all the commissions through um and yeah and then it's it's kind of slowly very organically just just grown and then Brett came on board yeah a few years ago that's right, yeah. I mean, I, I remember when, because originally it was just birds. It was wildlife before it was plants. Um, and then I remember you got a commission for a palm. Yes, and actually said, oh, I don't do plants. Yeah, I don't do, I don't do, <laughs> we don't do plants, we just do wildlife. Yeah, but, it's, but it's, again, someone actually described me as self-deprecating once, because I definitely, I'm, you know, my confidence isn't always there. So I was like, oh, no, I don't do that because I don't know how to. And then... I did it because she was quite insistent. I was like, oh, okay, I'll try it. <laughs> yeah, and that was it. Yeah. And that was it. You know, it was that was the beginning of of markets because you got the good feedback. Um, and you, I remember actually a funny thing is you came to me because at this point I was not involved in STEM gun at all. I was actually still working in fashion myself. Um, and I remember you came to me and you said, I, I think I'm going to turn these drawings into greeting cards. And I remember I actually laughed <gasps> a little bit. Thanks. Oh, I know it's mean, I know it's mean, but the reason why I laughed is because we were both so 
into the fashion business that I just it just it don't know it seemed a little bit funny to me but you did it um and you did the markets and they, the markets we did in Leighton were they were so good straight so away. what street markets were they they, yeah yeah like a kind of like a kind of you know like a nice food market um mm -hmm. and we did a couple of those and i i got involved just to help you with the logistics mm -hmm. because there was a lot of moving stuff around and you know obviously just to be on the stall to help with everything and that's how i first got started in it um and then i remember i i found myself because in my career i used to work on contracts so i'd like to work, work a six-month contract then i'd work an eight-month contract and in between those contracts i'd find myself with a bit of time and I remember thinking, to, because the markets were going so well, and we had a, a couple of local stockists, like a coffee shop and things like that, I thought, well, I might as well apply my, my time and do something. So I thought, I'll, I'll put together a list, a list uh, of stockists, um, which I still have today, which I think it started off with about 10 stockists, and then it's grown, 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 grown. But I was emailing people, I'll just see if I can get it into a few doors, you know, a few shops, and I had a bit of success. I remember we got our first one in Hackney, mm. bookshop in Hackney. Mm. And then you kind of, it started to get a little, a little, a little bit addictive working on it. You know, like every little success was like an absolute, you know, a milestone, you know, first store, yeah. amazing. What's next, you know? And then, yeah, I haven't, I haven't looked back really since that point. Uh, I mean, I was still working a job as well. Um, so I wasn't working on it full time. That, that's about three years ago when I first started working on it, but it's been two years now while I've been on it full time. Uh, and now, yeah, I mean, it's grown into a an international business, hasn't it? I mean, I've still lost small, but still yeah, small. We're, we're right. small. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I know international business sounds yeah. colossal. It sounds like you know, you it's, like, yeah, I guess it's technically true. It is so, true. Yeah, yeah. It's true. We we have, I think, we have about I don't know, twenty, maybe twenty five international stockists now. Uh, and I know that's not actually a lot, but for us, um, that's pretty good. Um, and it's growing every day. In fact, I just added two new American stockists this morning to our list um so that's four in new york now so yeah i mean it, it, it's 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 crazy really um how much it's grown and what you can achieve if you put your mind to it and and it it does become like the most amazing thing ever like working on your own business brings so much joy it's like every little win that you get uh in your own business is like a million times better than any win that you'd get in your if you're employed for me anyway um so yeah it's been incredible i mean there's so much to say about the, the growth of the business and how how it's evolved and all the little wins and yeah it's getting crazy yeah. so what was your background what what kind of work were you doing in the fashion world brett i was in uh pr public relations uh, so, yeah okay. i was in pr for 10 for 10 years so I guess when I was in the PR world, what I learned, what I took away from that the most was how to communicate with people, how to send emails, because that's what I used to do. And also selling. I mean, that's what I was doing. I was selling stories to magazines and newspapers every day, not physically, not money, but, you know, like getting them to feature mm -hmm. my brands and stuff. So, you know, I work with amazing people that taught me a lot of uh, ways to communicate with different types of people as well, you know, so... I worked in agencies that were dealt with streetwear. So you had a certain way of dealing with those editors, but I also worked with luxury agencies. So I, I learned how to communicate with um, editors, uh, big magazines, you know? So I think to, with the takeaway from that was being able to see something, a product um, and work out how to sell that to the customer, whether that's trying to get column inches or whether that's trying to get products through doors, you know? Um, so I think that really helped me. Massively. massively same for you as well with your fashion business you know with your what, what Kaz does because Kaz is, you know works in a studio so it's all about aesthetics and how to shoot things and, <sighs> um so I guess the fashion world has helped us massively yeah that's so interesting to hear how you've ha used your skills which you've built up in the the business world as in in a corporate environment to use them now with your small business and and that's how we first met because you contacted me i can't remember if it was instagram or a direct email and you contacted yes. me it must be a couple of years ago now and i was yes. like oh okay but you didn't you you were very good in that your email i remember it was very brief and to the point and very friendly and um you were offering um to to give me some of your your 
your cards and um, obviously I said yes because they're beautiful and Thank you. I, you're welcome I'm I probably will ask you actually for some photo images I can put with the blog posts I put up so people can see them as well I don't normally but um yeah oh, nice just so one. people can yeah. see them you're welcome because they're very yeah. graphic aren't they How, can you describe the range that you currently have so you've got gift cards and what else do you have um, yeah, so we have greeting cards, which is the core of our business. Um, we also do sell those same designs as prints, um, and they, they are a GK print from A4 up to A1. Um, but we've just recently started doing postcard sets as well. Did we send you one of those? I think we did. You did, and here's one I prepared earlier. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wild walks. And I will the, get uh, them out. This is with the um, Blue magazine, isn't it? So That's right, Blue sure. magazine, exactly, yes. Beautiful. There they are. Yeah, we're really proud of those. They went down really well. We've pretty much sold out now. I think we've only got about 10 sets left. Really? Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, They've done a... really, really well. Collector's edition, then. Yeah, people yeah. have framed them actually people have sent us pictures and they've framed all nine postcards in various different ways in the house it's amazing to see that you know uh, oh. people have done that like, i thought people would buy them just to use them as postcards really but uh, uh, people I, have framed I them i think they just they really resonated with everybody because we i think we launched it just after lockdown three and um it was about going out for walks because you couldn't do anything else so um yeah i think it really everyone was just like oh, this is yeah like Kind of perfect timing and getting excited for summer when all these you know flowers are going to come out so it was yeah we didn't really intend to do that but it, it yeah organic it, it, again it's organic, it's, it's organic. Yeah. everything we do seems to be organic you know i mean it features organic things yeah. but it's also it's also it just tends to flow especially yeah. when we were working with xena on that project who owned blue um right. yeah it was very much a collaborative project in terms of what was chosen to be painted and the words in the back and I think she actually came up with the name Wild Walks, which yeah. is uh, yeah. when she said it, I was like, Yeah, that's, that's it. definitely yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> so talking of being out and about, I noticed on your Instagram that you often do field trips. So, could you share with us the process from actually seeing a plant or a flower in, in real life and then the actual print appearing? Could you talk us through that process? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and yeah, I mean, I guess it's uh, that part of the business really shows like mine and Brett's like real collaboration because Brett again you know did a lot of photography when he was younger kind of ignored it for a few years and came back to it um so I say that I probably do a bit of research into where we want to go um we you know one of our say for example one of our really uh, favorite places to go is the Barbican uh, Conservatory um I've been going there for years. I actually remember the very first trip, which said that didn't exist then. Um, and yeah, I mean, we really, I feel like we kind of walk off separately, don't we? I mean, I'm normally holding a child. Or yeah, I'm normally, yeah, you're normally holding the kids and I, I'm, yeah. I've, I've got the camera, so yeah. I'm, I'm off. Yeah. Yeah, so we kind of do a bit of a tag team. Um, but yeah, so we've, we've got a design called Barbican Monstera. So, um, um, which is a little bit different to other ones are uh, most of designs just have one color background but this I kind of painted a <clears throat> kind of a concrete stone <clears throat> excuse me concrete stone background um, and yeah the monster is obviously on top so um, yeah Brett would take the photograph um, we kind of come back we almost look at the pictures straight away I'm always like oh can I put them on stories like I get really excited yeah. I want to put them on stories straight away <laughs> Yeah. Um, and so we do have a journal part of the website as well, which we put all of our field trips on. Mm. Um, and then it's kind of just really discussing which one we might want to do. Um, also, I'm a little bit realistic. I, you know, most of the designs work out really well, but there'll be a really dumb one that I do. I'm like, oh, that's beautiful. Throw that in the bin. So I think, like, I've, I, over the years, I'm like, I don't know that I can really capture that. So it's, it's about discussing whether I think I'm going to be able to. Uh, paint it as well um, and then there's kind of a, quite a discussion about like background colours because I, I paint everything on white paper um, and then Brett does the, the edit don't we? Yeah that's right so I, I take Caroline's painting and then I'll cut it out using Adobe you know like Photoshop and uh, uh. etc and I, I will cut them out and I'll clean them up as well um, and then I'll tend to I'm almost like Caroline's editor how it works okay. it's like caroline gives me the raw the raw goods 
and then um i take that and i cut it out and clean it up everything but i also sometimes i flip it uh, I, I zoom in uh, to get because Stengun has a very much uh, a certain type of aspect on on what it features rather than it being like a, a whole plant it tends to zoom in on a part of it um so I tend to, well, in fact, it's always me that does that, like decides where it's going to fit and how it's going to fit in the page. Um, and then when it comes to the background, generally what we do is, A, what, what suits it, but also mm. we tend to look at our collections. Like we've got a lot of blue ones or we don't have enough orange. Let's try and get another orange one in there. So because we always have a grid, because we're very stuck since starting, we've always had a grid of our products and it flows in a, in a color formation like this. So we always can see that, oh, there's not enough orange at the bottom. Let's get a few more orange ones in there. What will suit that? Um, where can we go? Uh, what would suit an orange? Oh, so let's, cactus. Oh, let's go to this place to shoot that and see if we can get the photo. Um, um, and that's how it works, isn't it? Uh, and then we've also uh, now been talking, <coughs> sorry, look, he's coughing. Um, we've also been taking those uh, designs then back to the place that they're originally um, inspired by so um, and having a photo of me in location with it so ah. um, for example the first one we did we went to a lavender field in Hertfordshire um, and the obviously the lavender design is on this really punchy pink um, and I just again is I feel, I feel like the word of the day is organic I managed to find a dress which was exactly the same color as the print um, and we went to the location, you shot me holding a huge A1 print in the lavender field. Oh, that's amazing, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, saw it and I'm going to link to it in the show notes because it is yeah, so incredible. It yeah. was. It was yeah. one of my best performing posts, actually. It mm. just, it was, the whole thing was just like, like a, a genius idea by Kaz. Oh, we should, we should just go and do this. And then like, within 10 hours, we were doing it, you know, Whoa. and then another another 10 hours it was posted on Instagram or whatever it was like it was very quick mm. it all the stars aligned like when we were driving to Hitchin which where the lavender field was the weather looked absolutely terrible mm. but when we got there it just suddenly brightened up mm. well not you know obviously there was a little bit yeah. of photoshop uh, in there but um yeah and it just the image was incredible and it was just it was true creative collaboration you know the whole like idea and getting there and shooting it editing it and then posting it and and we sold, I think we sold a whole bunch of lavender prints mm. and cards off the back of it as well. And I think we even got a new stockist yeah. that wow. saw that as well. So, um, yeah. So what yeah. triggered that creative idea of going back to where you'd originally seen the lavender? I think we, we were already going to the lavender field. Obviously, you start seeing that on Instagram. You're like, oh, my gosh, the lavenders are out. We need lavenders to go. out, yeah. We need to go there. And I think we were just going to, because we do quite often take just a greeting card and just kind of hold it um, in front of, you know, whatever the, the plant is that's in the, the design. Um, I think it was finding this dress. Um, but then also, before we went, I said, should I, should I wear this dress? And you were like, yes. Yeah. I, was like, I think it might be too much. Like, So, uh, yeah, I think maybe that just triggered it. And obviously, again, going back to the fact that we both work in fashion, um, you know, there was there was actually a designer that did um, a show in a lavender field, um, and I think that kind of all kind of triggered it as well. That you well, know, it inspired the design yeah, originally, didn't it? Yeah. 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 The catwalk was pink as well, so um, so yeah, I think uh, that yeah, just all all sorts of things. And then and then oh, sorry, that's <laughs> <laughs> alright. And then we've done quite a few since. We've done a magnolia one, which was actually inspired by. On magnolia tree which we just have outside here dungeness uh, dungeness dungeness was another really popular one i think i think that was the second one we did wasn't yeah, it I think that was. yeah yeah we've done several yeah we did the dungeness one uh, we did the magnolia the one we did the wisley one in the greenhouse uh, not greenhouse uh, hot house uh, and then we did the cherry blossom as well yes, yes. well you yeah. set a precedent now so yeah it kind of started a it started a, like a kind of yeah, yeah. content stream <laughs> Like. Yeah, you need to get a and hashtag. Have you got a hashtag one, for them? Actually, not a specific yeah. one. No. You should, yeah, no. I would. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, good idea. I'll yeah, make it and then retrospectively <laughs> put them on it, the ones that you've done already, and um, yeah. and put it in your bio as well. That um, that's your yeah. hashtag. 
Because right. Sten gun probably isn't something that people use very much. Well, yeah, I mean, with, with, we, we did once, we used to use the hashtag Sten gun drawings a long time, for what for a long time, but I wasn't sure, I wasn't sure that it was a good, like it was a positive one because Sten gun, like the name Sten gun, you know, it's an interesting story actually about the name Sten gun is um, Caroline's surname is Stenning and at university, <laughs> her nickname was Sten gun. Uh, and also Stengun was a stage name Kaz used when she used to do a few open mic nights, like way back, <laughs> way back. Um, so then that's how it just became Stengun Drawings. But if you Google Stengun Drawings, like you I get did drawings last night, Stengun Machine Guns, right? And that's you obviously know. not not what we're about at all. But um, thankfully now, actually, our images is ranking almost at the top now. So Good. I think there's, I think the top spot is a machine gun, unfortunately. But the second one is us. So if we keep pushing it, hopefully we can, you know, get rid of that horrible machine gun. Yeah. You know? I've actually had people ask me if that's how I paint. Is it a, a certain type of gun for the same gun? And I was like, oh, no, 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 it's just a nickname. <laughs> <laughs> I think, it, yeah, it's a, it's a curious name. I yeah. Gets, uh, that's right. And that's why I think we stopped using the hashtag because we were worried that we might get penalised for using it. Um, ah because of copyright and stuff so maybe create a new hashtag that's got something to do with color and botanics and matching clashing you know matching i don't know going back to the root the source or something or something i'm sure yeah. you can brainstorm with your creative oh yeah oh yeah background definitely. so let's talk about um some of the projects you've done you've had some collaborations and some commissions can you share some of the apart from the bloom one obviously which i've just shown mm. yeah yeah um I could talk about soldiers. Do you want to talk about the uh, these two ones? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, we've got we've got commissioned. I think this is lockdown one actually. So I was furloughed for a few weeks, um, which was, you know, actually quite a creative time for us. We were able mm. to talk about sitting on every single day and be like, right, what are we doing today? I know we couldn't go anywhere, but you know, we could always look at, you know, film clips we've been on and um but I, I actually got contacted by Selfridges to um, work on um, a, a painting of a, of a cannabis plant because they were doing a feature on CBD uh, oil. I can't write that around, isn't it? CBD. CB. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so that was that was um, literally a commission because I, I used to work at Selfridges quite a few years ago, so I have a, a friend that was able to kind of you know she put my name forward and this was another thing for the Selfridges homepage, um and it was um a feature on um ethical chocolate brands and um so it was the illustrations were about kind of dissecting the um the coca pod and uh looking into the kind of manufacture of um, process yeah mm. of chocolate um i found that we learned a lot about it by the end we learned a lot about <laughs> chocolate <laughs> And we ate a lot. Yeah, we ate so much chocolate. Good to hear. <laughs> Better try that one. Better try that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that was really amazing. And to see on the homepage as well. Yeah, it was homepage. Landing image. Yeah. But yeah. It was amazing. Yeah. I mean, could, for me, it was a real um, success because I I used to work there about seven, eight years ago. Like I just worked in the photo studio there. But it was just like, wow, as if, you know. And I was kind of walking up and down the escalators. Mm. I'd never know that I'd eventually have something on the homepage. Yeah. So, yeah, it was a real um, amazing. Yeah. And it was oh. also cool about that, that it was our second commission from yeah. those guys. Mm. Uh, the first one, we we did, um, we just did it to be, just to be involved. Like, they didn't pay us to do it, but the second oh, one we did. Wow. So, okay. it was a really nice feeling for, you know, to be, in, not yeah. only to be invited back and to be on the homepage, but also to be paid. It mm. felt like um, you know, like, like a stamp of approval, didn't it? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, what about the RHS collaborations? Yeah, so um, we've done several things for those guys now. Um, I think how that came about was is that we were doing a, a market. Uh, they called Green Rooms Market. We we're doing one of their yes. markets, and they must have sent out uh, a piece of marketing to a mailing list, telling people who was going to be there, and you know that kind of thing. Um, their head buyer, uh, the Wisley's head buyer, I think he's Wisley's head buyer, or was the RHS head buyer. He saw that list. He must have been sent it, looked through to see who might be interesting to him, found us, and then emailed you. Yeah. And that started the conversation. And then um, I took over. 
this is where you see the, uh, our strengths. I was on the phone to him like, oh my gosh, it's the man from the <laughs> <laughs> And I was just like, well, I think, yeah, I probably can't show him to my business partner. <laughs> yes, that's right. So I ended up having a conversation, take, picking up the conversation and speaking to him. And um, I can't, uh, there's a bit of a memory loss here. I can't remember exactly how it happened, but what essentially happened was, is that we went to Wisley because uh, we hadn't been there before. Uh, and again, we took loads of photos. He, he invited us actually. So we went, you know, he let us in and we looked around and we took a whole bunch of photos and uh, we put together a um, one of our uh, like galleries of pictures that we do. They're all on our website. It's still there actually, you can still see it. And so I put it and published it on our website and then, then sent him a link saying, here we've been, it was amazing. Thank you so much. We took some photos um, and he replied, he said, oh, I love what you've done. Um, I could really see a uh, you know a card collaboration with you guys. Uh, uh, would you consider doing a twelve-piece custom that bespoke line of cards for us? And at that time, that was like that was major for us. We would that was like incredible. That was like you know like the RHS is a, a massive company, a big stamp of approval. You know, so to have that to have a product out there that had our logo on it and their logo on it. I mean, that was just amazing. It was just amazing, wasn't it? Uh, um, and so that, that line is 12 designs that's only available from their Wisley shop and they've reordered it. They keep reordering it. They keep buying it and buying it and buying it. So it must be selling well for them. So. Wow. That's, that's really brilliant. Good. Yeah. And, and then you... we did a Chelsea one as well. Did you? Yeah, we did. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that, again, that was when Chelsea Bow Show had been postponed because of COVID. Um, oh. So we we obviously couldn't see the gardens, but we read what was you know was going to be there, and um, so we did three designs inspired by you know, rock show gardens. Um, you know, I I I'd imagine that we would have like looked at mm. and uh, and painted. Um, so yeah, that was that was great too. Yeah, yeah, that's been, it's been a great partnership with those guys. Um, they've been really really supportive and. They continue to buy and you know there's been talk of other things in the pipeline as well so yeah cross really fingers exciting. yeah yeah really and good. i noticed on your instagram as well that one of your stockists is rebel rebel the florist that's right yes how many other yes. florists stock you at the moment quite a few actually i mean uh, i yeah. i'm not going to be able to remember them all but no no uh, no no i'm not expecting you to there's a link i'll put a yeah. link to your website so people yeah. can see where they're stuck dd rose is is a long-standing customer of ours one of our best and favorite florists a local to us she's been buying into us for a long time in fact actually i think she is she's our best customer actually i think she's oh. ordered the most it sells the most um she's incredible i mean she's got like, two locations three locations at one point um so yeah, I think we're in total. We have there's about twenty florists on our on our list for sure. It's just a really good, you know, partnership, isn't it? Mm. You know, you've got you can buy some flowers and a card. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And your designs are very modern, aren't they? Yes. So well, I'm glad you said that. Well, that's what we've always tried to to do. I guess I think it's um, you know there's a there's a lot of you know botanical cards out there, so we feel that that's where we kind of try and make it a little bit different that they are mm. modern modern colors uh, quite simple. very graphic yes yeah. yeah yeah that's all right yeah try and keep them as contemporary as possible yeah well, incredibly yeah. i think the colors in the uh, are just what really pops um mm. are very vibrant yeah yeah thank you so let's talk about the impact of the pandemic on your business how have you felt over the last few months with everything happening well we've been we, the, the feeling it's been it's kind of a weird one for us actually because um you know unfortunately a lot because of all the shops closing the, the wholesale business just dropped off really i mean not completely it did still it was still going a little bit because a few of our stockists sell food so um, they were able to keep ordering the cards but I mean, it dropped off, dropped down to about 10% really. So we just had to pause there because you had a pickup for some of your cards. Yes. Where were they going? One was going to Brooklyn and the other one was going to Chicago. <sighs> it's just, <laughs> yeah, it, it blows my mind that something that you are creating there that originally 
wasn't something that you planned to do is now something mm. that you have people on the other side of the pond ordering. Yeah, I know it's crazy, isn't it? It's um, you can sometimes but wonderful. Just like really think about it, but like you just say that then, I was like, what? a bit choked yeah I mean, absolutely. <laughs> yeah so you could just sometimes just be like okay it's just you know another one going out and then you're like actually yeah mad. you do have yeah. to stop and think back to like when we first started emailing stockists like the idea of having a stockist in america was out of the question well not out of the question but you know like so far off yeah. and now it's just like i just go and get the chicago boxes quickly they're here you know like, oh i've forgotten about that one that's going to san diego quickly go and get that box you know <laughs> But um, isn't that the power of, um, oh, it's the power of the Instagram, but I also would love for you to chat about something we talked about before we started recording, um, how you said that your cards are very much, well, they have a marketing purpose, don't they, Brett? Yes, they do. It's not intentional. It just happens to be the nature of the product. They um, Essentially, every single card you send or sell is a business card for our business. So like for example, the ones that have just gone over to Brooklyn, when someone buys that card in, in the shop and sends it to their relative, whoever, wherever, it could be somewhere else in America, it could be LA or wherever, that person would get the card. Not only they'll be happy that they got the card and the message, but they might think, oh, I love this. What is this? Who is this? Turn it over. It has our, our logo, our name. It has our website. Um, so yeah, it's like that person might then check us out and follow us and order and you know, maybe inquire at a local shop, say, do you sell Stenga? And then maybe, you know, it just grows like that. Snowball. Yeah. 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 So, so. back to, to, to London life. <laughs> and yeah. um, you were saying about the pandemic, how your wholesale, your trade um, uh, stock um, inquiries started to fall. How did things progress after that? Yeah, so yeah, the wholesale business started to slow down for obvious reasons. Um, and I think in response to that, we noticed that our retail business was growing. So actually, bizarrely, our business didn't actually suffer. It just shifted from a wholesale business. We've always been a wholesale business with like the odd little bit of retail. And whereas recently, we've been a retail business with a little bit of wholesale. So we didn't actually lose money. If anything, we were making more money wow. from the sales from, from from retail because the margin so when you is say higher, retail obviously. though do you mean from your own website yes yeah right. yeah from our own website exactly mm -hmm. and i think that was because people weren't able to get the cards from where they would normally get them from so they were buying them direct from us mm -hmm. and then in a response to that we we noticed the, the spike so we made a few like packages like we made a five for ten deal on our website which is so popular um and then we started making packs so we did a floral pack and then we did a houseplant pack and actually we called them initially they were called missing you packs which were oh. for you know for people to buy and then in the packet came the, the obviously the card and the envelopes but also stamps so that you didn't need to go out and buy the stamps everything would come to you in the one package so you could wow. write them and stamp it and then just drop them in the post box um and they were really popular weren't they yeah they were i think they're just like the, the touch of adding the stamps was yeah was yeah a really good idea um yeah but yeah we just because i was doing that myself i was sending cards to you know my family and i was just so upset not to see them and so it was you know it really came from the heart really kind of making those packs mm. um, but yeah but i and also i just I kind of touched on earlier that i've been furloughed during that time so we we kind of did lots of fun projects in the house didn't we we um we've got like a big uh five fold doors just here and um we bought some uh glass pens so we drew like a tropical hot house on the five fold doors that's right yeah like and, you do yeah <laughs> why not I was like, this is gonna take me hours and it took me like 15 minutes. I was like, oh, great, I've done it. Yeah, it took, the edit took longer. Yeah. The photo edit took about two hours to, to get it, get the lighting <laughs> there. But, but that was a really popular post. I think it just, again, it really resonated with everybody being stuck inside, but trying to bring a bit of joy into your home. Yeah, that's right. <clears throat> um, just going back to the car packs, like, like the car packs, because they, they, they did so well, we, um, we actually ended up well, what I actually ended up doing was I actually ended up taking a short course in e-commerce. Um, um I, I did it for about i don't know I did it for about five months and in, in that it was like an online course and you 
you learn how to at your own pace you know digest information and, and in that course uh, i ended up changing our website provider we used to be with squarespace but now with shopify mm-hmm. um and shopify enabled us to do so many uh, more interesting things with discounts and bundles and packages and stuff like that um so we were able to then include a uh, pick your own five for ten which has been really popular so now you can go and you can pick your own five because we have our own curated packs that people love and they buy them because it's just a one-click purchase we have like a tree pack and a, a floral pack and we have a a garden pack etc cetera, etc cetera. and people like those but also people like to choose their own or yeah. even just have five of the same card as well yeah. um and also another thing that we learned to do or i learned to do in fact i haven't learned to do that i'm still learning it's so complicated is facebook ads of something else that we did as well um so yeah the 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 e-com site our website has grown phenomenally it's like it's so busy now um so yeah, we're now a retail and a wholesale business. So, so to there was a silver about, lining. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's the thing is, I mean, I know a lot of people had a lot of difficulty. Um, mm. uh, us included, like we, we lost some, unfortunately, some of our stockists closed because they, they were not unable to continue. Um, and, or they've changed direction and then no longer want to stop greeting cards anymore, that kind of thing. So we have had some like negative aspects, but on, on a whole, mm. actually, it's been quite positive for us. And I think we adapted to it quite well um so yeah it's been all right <laughs> wow so what are the next few months the rest of 2021 looking like for you guys uh well we're always continually always developing our line so we're always including more more designs to it um we're also uh, we have another house plant sorry another postcard set coming out in a couple of weeks this time it's about house plants Okay. Um, so that'll be in a couple of weeks. And then we've, we're also working on a few other little projects, aren't we? Uh, we're not exactly 100% certain that they're going to come to fruition just yet. So I won't mention them, but they are um, like card related, paper goods, that kind of thing. But we do have big aspirations for textiles and fragrance and things like that. But that, that's, not, that's not 2021, that's, that's beyond. But um, uh, oh, the other big thing that we did is we invested in our own printer as well so okay. now we can print our own prints not the greeting cards but the prints so one of the problems with the prints was is that we had to outsource them and not only were they more expensive but they also took ages and also we weren't happy with the quality so recently we were very very lucky to invest in our own g-clay printer so we can now print our own prints and um because of that the price the cost price has come down just ever so slightly so we're going to be able to do a bit of a buy one, get one type deal on our prints as well, which is going to be really good. Wow. Actually, that's the first time we've mentioned that. That's, uh, that's a scoop Exclusive. for you. <laughs> Thank a, you. That's a scoop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, so we're hoping to be able to do like buy one print, get the second second one of the same size for 50% off or something like that. You know, like another incentive. Mm. We've noticed that incentives on our website, people really react to those. Um, also, it's another, it's another tagline to be able to advertise as well. I mean, that's, yeah. learning about advertising it actually it actually um drives how you create product because you think i'm going to create a product how can i advertise this is this going to be something that's going to advertise well like what's it called what's the incentive what does it look like is it a package what pitch look like um with all those things in mind you create things around that um and i think that's one of the reasons why wild walks was so successful because it was it had the amazing name uh, it had a really good story because it was a collaboration and it was a package. It was a one thing and it was all mm. in it had a very beautiful narrative and people just went for it. Yeah. So it and, I, and I think that the houseplant mind. trend has just, it's been on your side. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, it's just exploded in the last, I don't know, three to five years. So um, just people seem to be really wanting as, before even the pandemic to have houseplants in their home and and it's more the younger generation which are probably is the kind of people who are more well i'm not saying not don't want to blank everybody but they they very much would appeal to a modern young audience but also people of my age and older as well i think yeah you, you're you've got the right product at the right time basically haven't you yeah mm-hmm. yeah thanks i think yeah i think they're definitely when I started painting 
house plants, that's when you could really see like the momentum on Instagram as well. People taking pictures of their, you know, interiors and and house plants and then the kind of rise of lots of house plant shops as well. So yeah, it kind of was good kind of timing. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. For sure. But also with the flowers and the um, they, they're almost two separate customers, aren't they? You've got the house plant customer. Um and then you've also got the kind of box glove floral customer as well. Um, and then the overlap think, as well. Oh, completely. Yeah, they all completely which overlap. Is us. Yeah, which, which is us. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah, which is us. We're, we're, we're everything. But, uh, you know, I, th- I think that's the, the what makes our collection accessible to everybody mm. is that you can be someone that likes hydrangeas, whereas a hydrangea to some people can, could be considered to be a very uncool plant almost a bit nanny-ish but if you if you yeah. look at it the way that we paint it also the certain varieties that we paint of them and how we put them against a black background and the way that we every, everything's branded it, it almost not elevates it because that's not the right term but um it makes it contemporary mm. you know? definitely um, definitely so, so yeah yeah and then just uh, about the rest of the year um i'm on maternity leave from my other job so uh i guess for me it's just trying to paint as much as i can over the next year yeah. but um we'll see how well that goes <laughs> oh. i actually would like to do some watercolors at some point i, I haven't used those since i was a teenager i think so yeah again maybe this year's a time to for me to like experiment a bit as well and just see yeah, yeah, I'd love I don't think to I see. Want to just stick to one sort of medium, you know, because it because again the textures of plants are so different. One thing will look better with acrylics, and you know, another um, with the gouache paint. So, yeah, I'm open to mixing around. Development. Mixing around. <laughs> yeah, yeah development. I'd, well, yeah, yeah. I'd really be interested <laughs> to see your interpretation of a modern watercolor. Oh, yeah. me too. So would I. Me too. <laughs> I can't wait. How can I sell I will... this? <laughs> <laughs> so let's finish off with your three tips, please. Sure. Yes. We've got we've actually got a few written here. Um, good, good. But more uh, the merrier. Go, the more the merrier. You can always edit them out. Uh, the, fir- <laughs> the first one um, is what I one that I put down here, which I think is super important for any business especially a new business um, especially if you're at the development stages of that business whether it's an organic business or whether you just set out to, to start a business um, and that is to to be original as much as you possibly can obviously in this day and age lots of things have been done and you know it's hard to carve out a niche for yourself but there is definitely um, whether it's cards or candles or ceramics or whatever it is that you do, it, it, try and find your own little take on it, something that's yours and something that you can hold proud because, you know, um, recently we, we've been hearing about, uh, to you, lack of a better term, copycats of people, not not us, thankfully, but some of our friends who have small businesses, they've been experiencing people that are just outright copying what they do and, uh, and it's just not a very nice thing to do. But also, you know, um, if you want to be taken seriously and you want to get wholesale accounts, buyers are very clever. They've got mm-hmm. their ear to the ground. They know who started it and who the original person is, and they're never going to buy into um, a brand that's just copying somebody because it'll, it'll, it'll look bad for them and their store. So I think, you know, be original, be, you know, create something exciting and make people want to buy into it and um, it's totally fine to take inspiration from people in fact I we encourage that we take big inspirations from people um, whether that's um, you know the, the work that they do or, or the way that they run their business and um, or marketing t- marketing tactics or you know everyone looks at other people's stockist list for example like, oh I've not seen that shot before oh you know that's all that kind of stuff's fine you know in fact if you've got a, a good relationship with another small business owner I think it's also cool to ask for advice and and things like that but when it comes to your actual product and what it is that you do I think you just need to have a little bit of your own flair something that's uniquely yours even even if it's just small because obviously there's hundreds of greeting card brands out there hundreds of candle brands especially at the moment those new businesses popping up because of uh, COVID and people being made redundant and people taking that bit of risk because they've been put Mm -hmm. in a situation to to do it Um, so I encourage all new businesses, but just just keep it, try and be original. 
I think is super important. It's good to be reminded of that, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Um, should I talk about that kind of leads on? Yeah, yeah. It's just kind of quite similar, but um, I kind of wanted to say about staying true to your aesthetic. And so obviously, you know, you found what you, you know, your style and you want what you want to do. Um, and although we were talking about how we want to develop things, I think, you know, I'm always very aware that I don't want to just steer in a completely different direction and uh, do something that just doesn't feel right. Um, and yeah, we, we were asked to, we had a commission request uh, not too long ago and it just didn't feel right. It was, you know, it was an amazing idea. It was for a book and um, it was for obviously botanical um, illustrations, but um, the request for it was for it to be, you know, with a, a pen drawings and black and white. And I just, it just didn't feel quite right. I was like, we could, you know, it's a great um, opportunity great for Instagram, you know, there's so many plus points, and I was just like, it just doesn't feel right. And yeah. so I, we're, we just felt like we were taking away from what we were trying to create it's in terms of time, because uh, obviously we're a bit time poor. So it's <laughs> just, um, you know, making sure that we're sticking true to what we we are doing. And we feel like we're onto a good thing, you know, we mm. just want to develop that rather than going in a completely different direction. Yeah, yeah that's super important yeah definitely mm. um stick to what you do don't be distracted basically mm. yeah <laughs> um so you you're gonna do that one yeah yeah okay. go for it yeah um we wrote down you said getting yourself out there and i think this kind of stems from me starting a little instagram account what was it 2016 i think of my uh bird drawings that they mm. were back then um and actually and getting this newfound uh, confidence with uh, comments and likes and things and then um i approached a, a local cafe um dean is give a little shout out to them because they're amazing they supported us very early on um and this cafe um had local artists work in, in on the walls um, so I think I'd only like painted a couple of things. I was like, well, would I be able to show something? And they were like, yeah, definitely. So, um, you know, it's just taking that, you know, you know, making sure that, you know, you, you are buzzing from that confidence and using it and pushing, you know, what you, um, what you've been creating. Um, cause you know, as I said earlier that my confidence isn't always there, but sometimes there's a little fire in me and I'm like, oh, I'm going to ask or I'm going to do this. And yeah. So it's kind of really pushing it um, in those early days. But now I have Brett pushing me. Yeah. Not literally. Well, <laughs> I... <laughs> you know, you do you definitely, um, you know. Encourage. Um, encourage me a lot. Yes. Yeah. Which is really amazing. Oh, that's the PR in me, I yeah, guess. It's the PR in <laughs> uh, but you know, that, that Deanie's one, I mean, you, you know, they were our very first stockist that you got by mm. going and asking them um, and then because they put some of the artwork up and those days they were paintings they were like prints or paintings they were up on the wall and the market that we used to the first market we did was just across the street from there um, and because Deanie's was a very cool um, like modern coffee shop in Leighton at that time and Leighton was still very much developing uh, all of their customers would recognize that we were the same and we'd, oh, we see mm. we've just seen your stuff in Deanie's um, and then they, they would buy because of that and actually the, the three paintings, I think they were the first three or maybe the second three paintings you put up there, uh, a very well-known mummy blogger bought all three and featured them, still does to this day actually feature them on her Instagram. Wow. Um, so that was also another boost. So, you know, the whole like get yourself out there uh, is so important. You know, again, like with me emailing you, you know, yeah. find out who people are, like in a nice way, uh, don't, don't be creepy. <laughs> um, find out who people are and um, not just influencers and things like that but your peers and you know network and just talk to people and get your brand out there and make it a thing that uh, a brand that people know that's what you want you want you want it to be that when someone asks them have you heard of stained gun drawings or whatever your brand is they say yeah you know so mm -hmm. yeah little wins grow into big wins basically yeah, so yeah. i mean that's how the whole rhs rhs thing happens because mm. it was uh green rooms market happened because 
of something else that happened and then that happened because that happened and it's like a chain it's like an upward snowball it goes up like this you know I so, look yeah. forward to seeing where the next part of your chain leads you me too yeah. I can't wait I can't yeah. wait we have more tips here if you want some more yeah you carry on uh, okay I've done that one, done that one. Uh, um, this tip is uh, not to be scared to invest so that can be when I say invest uh, I mean um, financially but also emotionally and your time um, when it comes to finances uh, obviously if you if you get a spark if you get like a an idea or um, make something makes you feel confident that you you have something like if 10 people like something then maybe another 10 will and if that 20 people will like it then maybe another 40 will you know so don't be scared to invest a little money. And one of the biggest investments we did um, very early on, which was very scary for us because I think it was an investment of about maybe three grand or something like that. Three grand was a lot of money when our brand was, it was nothing. It was literally just an idea. And I think we had the, we had the logo and stuff. And... I think we had a very small grid. So I just had to paint loads. Didn't yeah, before. we didn't have a website. Yeah. Um, and we, so we invested in a trade show. So we did top draw. Mm. Wow. And we use our own personal money. In fact, it was all your money. Yeah. It? it was your bonus. It has got a bonus and work. Whack I didn't it. get three grand. But oh, what? Well. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> our personal money uh, investing into something that we didn't know mm. that was going to work. And I, I think that we were both worried that we were just throwing that money down the drain and that it wasn't going to work and that we were just going to be entering an arena with loads of big, big boys, big brands, um, mm. you know, all the kind of things and um, companies that we aspire to. But I mean, it was the best money we ever spent. I mean, it was amazing. I mean, it was like, you straight away we were getting orders. We, you know, we came away with new stockists. We only had two at the time or something. And we came away with like, I don't know, maybe 12 or something like 12 new stockists. But we, we've we got orders still to now. When was, that? when was that? Three years ago we did that. Yeah, it's September 2018. Yeah, so we're getting orders from people that saw us at that show who didn't order then, but they ordered now. Mm. And those customers are repeat customers and, uh, we've met distributors, so like one of the ways we sell into Europe is people just buy bulk from us. And they, like, they buy like 5,000, 10,000, 30,000 cards at a time. And they do all the work. They, they distribute them uh, through Germany or France or wherever it might be. Um, so yeah, don't be scared to invest money. If you, if you feel you have something, um, then don't be scared to do that. And also... Uh, with your time and your emotions as well like how much you put into it like I, to have a successful not saying that we're successful but to have a um, to run a, a business a, um, a passion project as you like you have to give it everything you know you you have to work every hour you can put into it your brain like for me personally my brain is constant <laughs> it's constant sten gun drawings like it's Stain gun drawings and then like the kids and families like that. So I'm, only, I'm, only, <laughs> I'm only joking. I'm only joking, but it is it is it is on my mind a lot. But I think that's why we love it. I mean, that's mm. definitely why I love it. I love that. I've never had so much enthusiasm and joy from any employment that I've ever had. Um, so yeah, don't be scared to invest. I never thought I would be an entrepreneur. Um, but it, it, stain gun drawings has molded me into one, um, and I love it. Yeah. That's such, yeah, I think sometimes it needs something to happen to make you take that first step into running Indeed. your own business, you know. Um, yeah, it yeah. did for us, for sure. And I, I'm not somebody that believes in fate or anything like that, but there's been some occasions along along the three years that we've been in business where I could have taken my exit, like, this is not working. Maybe I should go back in and get a job and like an interview presents itself or, or something. And then either like, I don't get the job or um, I'm too busy for the interview or, you know, I can't, there's this interview, maybe they've been invited for this job. Let's go and check it out. But I can't, I've got to go and do this trade show, you know? And it's like the, the cosmos or the universe or whatever you want to say, keeps me back. <laughs> Um, and I'm so glad it has because now that is the leaving thing on is, is is gone. You know, it's like you almost go over like there's like a hill or like a line that you cross that before you cross it or before you climb over it, it's like, is this a thing? 
is is this what we do now or is it just like still gonna is it gonna fail i mean it could always fail no matter how big you get but um i feel like we are over that line now you know i now i i have a job this is our this is our job this is what we do you know um and it is, it's really scary when yeah. you, know, you are working on it with not earning a lot, you know, you, you start to really uh, review what you're buying, you know, even, you know, things like, you know, um, as I said, we worked in fashion, so, you know, it's like, do I need that new pair of shoes? No, let's work on Stingar, you know, yeah. so you do, you kind of really review what you're buying and um, it makes it so much more rewarding that you're, you know, channeling that you know your money somewhere else and it's just food and it's just you know the essentials but then you're building this business so it's yeah that's right yeah it's, it's all part of the five-year investment strategy that we're in basically um and we're just we're in year four now but it's crazy to think where 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 we were in year one and now we're where we are now if you told me back if you told us back in year one that you were going to have like people collecting orders for chicago and brooklyn uh, I would just be, I'd, I'd be like, don't be silly. I think back in year one, I was just like, this might work. I'll do it for a little bit while I, until another job comes along. Um, so yeah, it's where we're going to be in year 10. Um, who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> so have you got any more tips or shall we finish off? Uh, uh, there is one last tip on here that you can talk about if you like. Well, I just, I guess because um, my tip is just try not to take anything too personally because mm. Obviously, for me, it's just a real, like, I paint the stuff. So, it, you know, it can be if somebody's like, oh, no, it's not quite right for my shop. I'm like, oh, but no. Mm. Um, <laughs> so, and that has happened, actually. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it really, but now I find that I don't get like that as much because, you know, I realise this isn't for everybody. There's a lot of greeting cards out there. So, um, you know, you just literally yeah you can't you just can't take that away and feel down about what you're doing um and you know there might be you know a stockist that you've had for a little bit and then they decide to you know buy a different group of greeting cards so it's just it's just the nature of it and i think you know the, the longer we're in it the more we become um hardened, hardened we're hardened to it and realize it is, it is business you know it's yeah not that someone is looking at my brush strokes and going mm. You know, it, it, it's just, yeah. yeah, you just have to really sort of have that more business head, which Brett has and I have less, but, you know, I'm learning to have it a little bit more. Yeah, yeah, good advice. Oh. That's Thank you. <laughs> Six and five. <laughs> I'm very grateful and I'm sure my listeners and viewers will be too. Oh, so okay. where can people find you online? Uh, our web address is stingundrawings.com. And it's S T E N G U N D R A I N G. Yeah. 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 And you were the same on Instagram? Yes. Yes. Underscore, yeah. isn't it? Stengun um, underscore, underscore drawings. Okay. Yeah. That's right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, so I can't thank you enough for um, coming on mm. the podcast today. I've so enjoyed, one, meeting you for the very first time in, mm -hmm. well, sort of in real life, but not really. Um, but two, just the conversation we've had, I think, as I'm, as you might not know, you're the first people I've introduced to the podcast who aren't florists or garden designers. So I wasn't sure how it would go, but I'm thrilled and it's encouraged oh, me to include more artists and people who are probably always with a botanical or floral connection to the podcast but yeah it's it's been such a pleasure so thank you no thank so, you yeah it's been so nice to talk about it yeah it? it has actually yeah yeah it's really nice actually yeah. and reflect on so, what you've you achieved so yeah, yeah it's, indeed. It's, it's so easy to not and just carry on isn't it yeah we should open a bottle of champagne <laughs> oh. <laughs> and thank you so much rocky for being so well behaved oh my gosh he's been a dream boy hasn't he yeah, yeah. so thank asleep. you <laughs> he knew he needed to to be quiet <laughs> behave <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, hopefully one day we'll meet in real life. One day. Yeah, but thank you so lovely. much for your time this morning. You're welcome. And um, yeah, hopefully see you sometime.
Take care. Thank you. Thanks, Werner. Bye. 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 So I hope you enjoyed this week's episode. It was so lovely to meet Brett, Caroline and Rocky. And I hope you found all of the valuable hints and tips they shared useful. I, for one, certainly did. Do give them a follow over on Instagram, Stengun Drawings. And yeah, check out their website too for their beautiful designs. So in the meantime, until next Tuesday, it would be lovely if you'd like to add a rating, review on Apple Podcasts or add a like or just DM me on Instagram. I'll see you next Tuesday.